Hello and welcome to your favorite comic book channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Before we dive into today's pretty awesome book, I want to remind everybody about Cartoonist Kayfabe comic book Christmas in July. The last Saturday in July, we invite our audience to take some comic books and put them in their little local lending libraries. We did this last year. Probably saw a thousand photos of those little local lending libraries with comics peeking through that front window, looking great. And uh, hopefully we can increase that number this year. We know that people go to those little local lending libraries because they are readers. Let's give them some good comic books to read this year. Last Saturday in July, tag us with your photos and let's try to grow some new readers. I also want to remind everybody that we have a Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. And at the King Kayfaber level... You are watching us record this session live and contributing to the conversation. You are also getting access to all of our videos early before anyone else, and uh, that can help mitigate the kayfabe effect. When we look at a book that is scarce or uh, valuable, you'll be the first ones in line to get that before those prices are spiked or before those copies disappear. So check out the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon and see what level works for you. And this is one of them, man. This is going to be a kayfabe-affected book. Like There are very few of them on the aftermarket right now. A lot of James Jean marks out there. There sure are. This is this is kayfabe affected at this at this moment. Yeah, and so this is Process Recess, which was published by Ad House Books in the early two thousands, and showcases James Jean's work. At this time, he's probably doing fables covers in terms of comics work. And uh, you can see, born in 79, younger than me, older than you, Ed, but uh, a phenomenal drawer and painter. Celebrated today more for his fine arts than his comics work, but definitely uh, pulled in some Eisners doing comic book covers. So we're going to kind of go through this book and just admire some of his sketchbooks and illustrations. You can see they cover the time from 99 to 2004. This he's Paul Pope intro, handwritten, by the way. Really, like, the last generation of School of Visual Arts people, and, you know, people are going to get mad, whatever, um... But there was like an exceptional period of SVA students. And this was the, the, the final era. Maybe Dash Shaw is like the last like real superstar. But there's just nobody. People are spinning their wheels the past 20 years. Uh, but his crowd, you know, because that's Gerard Way. That's Farrell. That's Becky Cloonan. You know, that crew, he was a part of that. And can you imagine the creative energy with just those names alone? Yeah, you got to imagine a lot of uh, competition in those critiques. You know, that's a lot of talented people, and I'm sure they were all uh, growing and bouncing off of one another, seeing what they were doing. Iron sharpens iron. Yes. Props to uh, Chris Pitzer for recognizing so early, man, because this dude, you know, you you ain't getting nothing from him if you ain't spending hundreds of dollars now. Yeah, it's really interesting to see like where he is now, 20 years after th this work, essentially. Uh, but you can see just a adventurous artist going in a lot of different directions and styles yeah yeah and, and yeah he's covering ground dude because some of it can fit that juxtapose kind of crowd some of it can fit it's very classic painting here classic portrait figure portrait yeah some of it can can uh fall into the like the monty bow camp blab mm -hmm. when it was like a fantagraphics you know art director pornography kind of thing these sketchbooks are out of control. Yeah, ink drawings, everybody. It almost looks like pencil in some places here, but these are ink drawings. And I love whenever he'll draw this stuff where it's like, here's a figure, and I guess maybe the figure moved a little bit, so you get, like, different pieces in time spread across the same drawing. I always thought that was really cool. Yeah. Like modern cubism or something. Also, the notes... I find really interesting because I've seen a few people's sketchbooks who do that where it's almost unreadable or it's really tiny little notes. I've seen people that draw uh, on these little sketchbooks and I don't know the size relative to like what we're looking at in the printed page here. But some of those notes I just find really interesting is like, yeah, got to got to write this for myself. Don't even know if you could read it later on. And so these are sketchbooks now that we're in and you can see like how detailed he's working, like working out a hand painting. Like, come on, man, who does that in their sketchbooks? Just seems like such rigorous work. I also like these pages that are just loaded with detail too. I don't I just can't imagine working this much in a sketchbook. You know, if I produced a page like this, I know, that right? would be like my sketchbook work for the year. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 the thing about like getting your ten thousand hours is that 
it's got to be the torture that you can endure, basically, that, that you're not counting your hours. So you don't do this if it's not just, like, ingrained a little bit. This, this is your Tom Brady getting up extra to do stuff that nobody's going to see. This is your Kobe Bryant. Yes. Yeah, the guy that you show up at the gym and he's been there three hours already. Exactly. Yeah, that is totally James Jean with a pencil. Um, look at how he's doing this figure drawing, ran out of space, so draws the two legs like separate. You can imagine this leg looks like it would fit absolutely perfectly on that drawing. <laughs> Interesting format, especially knowing that all this stuff is probably way bigger. So I wonder what the creative choice was there with uh, Uncle Chris. Or if it was a James Jean choice. Yeah, I'm guessing it's a, a price thing because twenty five dollars in like oh four and you know, color. You're doing full color exactly, and I think it's just you want to represent this. And these sketchbooks probably vary quite a bit in size. You know, I'm not sure these are giant and being reduced. Yeah, probably a little reduction, but uh, I think there's a lot of reduction. Yeah, I think there's tons of reduction. It's probably like half. Like, look at that. Come on now. Yeah, it's very fine writing. Yeah, this may be a bigger one. I think the one before this was even horizontal. It is a challenge when you think about putting together a book like, how do you represent this stuff? Because mm -hmm. it's a nice thick book. There's probably 200 pages here. But trying to accommodate 200 pages of material in a way that like flatters the best of it. I wonder if this is uh, SVA. <laughs> oh, man, I hope so. It'd be funny if this is all like... <laughs> Wait, let me see a feral... Ta talking <laughs> trash on his uh, meat house mates. I think he shared a studio uh, with um, David Cho for a minute around this early era. Yeah, it could be. I know he spent time in L.A., so that would make sense. But look at how finished like some of this stuff is. It almost looks like you're working out some of your Fables covers at this point. Like even you know Central Park here painted in the middle, that's a ton of work on a page of a sketchbook. He has such a unique palette that is clearly, a, from a distance, you could just see the colors and know that it's James Jean. A little wet on wet on this page. It does make me wonder about the tipping point. Like what... What is it that set him off to such great fame? Like, there, there. It's so weird how how we just are not in a monoculture anymore. And there are people who are watching this who are like James who, but like the dude has oh, at least over a million followers. Uh, has gigantic shows where very rich like Shanghai and stuff like probably made millions of dollars just on that show alone. Uh, big footprints to like just even make the shows possible. Warehouse spaces with you know t ten thousand square foot space. Now self publishes a lot of his books, and there'll be high end, beautifully produced hardcover books of his art. And I think he self publishes at least a couple of those in the last decade. This is neat to me looking at it, thinking about it from Chris Pitzer and Ad House Books publications, because this is a very high end production. Like just getting quality scans to be able to reproduce this kind of work seems like it would be uh a lot of technical challenges to produce a, a book like this sure and i would guess that you're getting some proofs along the way which raises the price for a small indie uh, publisher but you'd have to get proofs to make sure this stuff is going to reproduce especially some of the color sketchbook pages yeah for sure and, and that's very expensive like uh you, you you know you run off one set of the book unbound uh while these people have to keep these presses moving that is not cheap yeah uh, but you're right. Yeah, I mean, you you have to see how the ink reacts, like to uh, to what they're setting up here. Look at the bizarreness of this image, and I linger on there because I feel like some of this stuff you start to it, it continues in his work. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like if you follow him to this day, you'll see some of these ideas still represented. Nine eleven being drawn, and this is his two thousand. I mean, look, it's dated nine eleven two thousand and one. Jesus, like these pages are literally being drawn in real time. Man, one of the things that I notice when you see closer to the spine of, of the, uh, the sketchbooks is some of them are, um, staple bound and the spine is super rusty, suggesting a lot of wet media yeah. on the page there. A lot of water touching that, the, uh, staples. So each of these sketchbooks so far has been, uh, listed by year. I guess they could overlap some, but a lot of them change size and format. It makes me wonder like what his sketchbook collection looks like. Cause at some point, does so he have a hundred of these? Right. You know, like he's rolling through through this work. I can't believe the amount of like paint in the sketchbooks. Right. It just seems like so much time. It's such a wild era. What, like, what, was he a Meat House guy? Yeah. Yeah. So like Farrell is a big sketchbook dude. I think that came out specifically from some of the SVA 
like the classes and stuff, whether you were required to keep a sketchbook or it was something that you were really seeing your instructors as uh, this is the way to work. Draw all the time. Draw when you're at the airport. Draw on the airplane. And, you know, just such an emphasis on drawing everything and drawing from life, whether it's people sitting there or just the chairs themselves. Yeah. And the best guys take that to heart, you yeah. know? Like, like you're not playing. If you're going to be the best one of the top artists, it isn't 10,000 hours that are going to get you there. No, no. You know, this is 100,000 hour guys. Yeah, yeah. This video is brought to you by the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. Three levels of access to our videos early, and at the King Kayfaber level, you actually get access to all of our videos early and the recording session. So you'll be the first in line to beat the Kayfabe effect. When you see a book that you want to add to your collection, you'll get it before uh, the Kayfabe effect sends it through the roof or makes it hard to find. These videos are also brought to you by the books that we make. You see our bibliography in front of you. We've got some new books on their way or recent additions to our publications. So Street Angel, Princess of Poverty will be out later this year from Image Comics. This collects all my Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel Deadly Squirrel Live, which is also available from Image. You can see Hulk Grand Design and the Plain Janes as well. And my latest comic, True Crime Funny, is available directly from my website or on my Patreon. Ed's got some big books coming out later this year, starting with the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus. Notice that beautiful gold foil cover. This is going to collect all of the Hip Hop Family Tree comics, as well as 140 extra pages, and will be out this fall in time for the holiday season. But it has been sent to print, so you're going to want to reserve your copy ASAP to make sure that you get one this holiday season for you or the Hip Hop fan in your life. X-Men Grand Design is being collected. All three of the X-Men Grand Design volumes in one easy to read copy so pick that one up again pre-order it now it'll be ready for christmas this year and red room crypto killers the third season of red room first two issues have been released already there are two more coming soon and there are two trade paperbacks collecting the first two volumes these are all self-contained so whatever red room you find that's the perfect place to start reading and now back to our video and you see it whenever you see this kind of extensive sketchbooking. And this was the stuff I fell in love with with James Jean early on was the line work. Uh -huh. I just adore this kind of line work where it's one line. It's not the kind of stuff that you see an artist like a comic book artist, you know, kind of going over and over, especially if you're, you know, brush inking or something, you're really chasing a certain line. It could just be in a this micron, case, yeah. It's just describing shapes and forms. This was such revelation, like, uh, you know, we talk about deadlines and it's not a deadline exactly, but it's also not labored over. You know, it's it's clearly to block off space, to create these edges, but it's not about the line itself. And, and I find that beautiful. It's like functional. Yeah, totally. And you see that, the, like, the line kind of picks up and, and gets put down after, like, it's almost like as his eyes scanning the, the thing that he's looking at, you know, he's drawing those lines. That's the stuff that I would also marvel at. Like, this is an interior of a car. You know, like the stuff he's noticing to put in there, and I like whenever it mashes up two drawings. You know, these are two different scenes here that are happening, but hey, there was some blank blank space still on my sketchbook. Might as well uh, fit that in. And now you're seeing more of his finished illustration here. I don't know if these were published anywhere or they were portfolio pieces or whatnot, but uh, you can you can kind of see a different a different approach. You know, what's fun is like these are basically the size of postcards. So say you're an illustrator trying to get any, and this is the postcard that gets sent. That one's getting tacked up on that art director's uh, little, little, uh, uh, cubicle. Definitely. If you follow James Jean, I feel like this is an image and style that you would see influencing his work, running through his work for many years. <laughs> Go back one real quick. Is this a, like, I thought she was like lactating, like a lactating like Amish chick or something. There's something happened in there. Yeah, I don't know what else that would be, right? <laughs> that must be what, what we're seeing there. This was an image that I, I would see in different places. It might have been a promo for this book, but I think this may have appeared somewhere. Look at the chalkboard octopus image in the background yeah it's wild like you don't even know what tools you can't deconstruct that you have no idea what the fuck he's using to make the those colors happen and react that way this also reminds me of such a time period like you're mentioning totally. all of this and stuff like this is such an early 2000 like all i feel of this. like i'm going back in time seeing these images yeah yeah no diss man but but it's yeah, just not at all it's just uh the aesthetics of like that generation yeah, and you guys watching at home, man, Cause spread this video around because I've got more James Jean we could get into. Yeah, and I yeah, would love that, to look at like his Fables covers collection, that's stuff important, like that. Yeah. So let's make this video popular and we'll, we'll look at more James Jean. Like part of this era too would be, this is like the very last era of like 
like art magazines that would just be like a, pay, a bunch of the, it would be like maybe an odd shape like a little square when i would go to ides if i wasn't seeing enough comics that that i wanted i would just go up to like you know basically they kept it in the porn section uh you go up there and there would just be these like one off weird art magazines that were beautifully produced that would just be full of this kind of stuff and even this shape is kind of keeping in in the spirit of the, those weird odd shaped art mags i can't even remember any weird any of those titles or anything of those things i probably have some in my boxes i remember uh, while you were sleeping was the graffiti one that was real great man and, and the guy who ran it uh if you if you send him polaroids make it polaroids of your girlfriend or somebody like he would give you free wow. fat caps he's a real pervert kind of fella <laughs> I always like this kind of drawing too, where it's like one line, but then you go into detail and rendering at certain parts of the. Just of no the rules, you right, know. Like yeah. this is a sketchbook. This is for me. Like I'm, I'm working stuff out. I'm figuring things out. Like I could do whatever I want. Uh, it's very liberating to see this kind of thing because of the rigidity of the crumb sketchbooks, you know. Like and and he affected people so heavily, where it's like, oh man, you got to make a masterpiece. Of everything. It's like, nah, dude. Like, that's what I got from my feral sketchbooks. Like, I, he, I think he lived here in, in town for like 30 days or something. Yeah. Filled up a whole black and white 150 page sketchbook in that, th in that 30 days. That's like, what, five, five, five pages a day? What's the math on that? Yeah, quite a bit. We should um, maybe start a sketchbook playlist. Because now we've got Crumb, we have Chris Ware. There's probably a couple other ones that we've looked at. Yeah. Sienkiewicz, I think, and Steve Rude. Yeah, I don't have too much of that kind of stuff. But it's probably at least half a dozen videos or more. Yeah. Enough to start getting that into it because it is kind of the subculture of like, if you're into drawing and art, you know, there is a huge volume of sketchbooks that are out there. Like it's definitely a, a subject that people are interested in and why not? You know, it's, it's almost, you get a glimpse inside someone's head as to how they think, how they see the world. And I think this speaks volumes to an artist of James Jean's success because you can kind of see him looking at everything, certainly looking at the world in ways that... I'll be honest, I, I don't. Yeah. And quick notes here on uh, what we've seen on all these pages, whether it's like sketchbook, ballpoint pen, and acrylic from 2004, or, you know, where these things are at. Vienna has an amazing museum quarter in Austria, you know, kind of going through and just giving you little kind of insights into what you are seeing on these various pages. We always love this. Let's some see tools. some of the materials. He had these ballpoint pens. I remember when Farrell was here. And he gave me one. And it was like, I can't remember if it was Korean or Japanese, but he had bought like a case of them cheap. They were the cheapest pens, but they drew so well and they were a very fine line. And I think it's this ballpoint pen. It wasn't anything special, but it just, uh, I don't know, it, it, it was a fine line that worked really, really well. And there you can see one of his sketchbooks that resembles this shape i wonder if part of the inspiration if this was something that chris would have seen yeah and was like oh i love that let's, <laughs> oh, let's do it speaking of chris man like stuff like stuff like go go to the text page the, like this one this page like chris would talk about like this would probably be delivered in photoshop or as like a flattened file and then chris would have to adjust the type and like <laughs> fix the misspellings and stuff and the process to do that is like so much tougher it does look hand lettered. So I bet you this did show up as a scan of some sort. That's funny. I, you know, I didn't even think about that. I, no, I don't think it is. Look, these at, eights are different. Look and that's this, pretty advanced. For look at this word recess here and here. Like, does that look close? Different C's. Is that true? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm a little far away. The S's are kind of similar. Yeah, I, I, I would bet that's a uh, handwritten text. Just because, like I say, to have that much variation in your letter form. Yeah, of course. That's of pretty course. early. You know, they do it now, but back then, not so much. Also, it's fun to read people's biographies as, like, early in yeah. his career versus, like, what would his biography be like now? Probably nothing mentioned there right. makes it into the uh, the cut now. But pretty ambitious book for an indie publisher in the early 2000s, hardcover and full color. And I think these things sold well enough because he did at least one more volume. Oh, yeah. Um, of the James Jean artwork. I'm sure it just sold out. Like, it's like, we, you know, price to order, like put that thing out it's going because let's say he it's not like he was no slouch and this uh it was remarkable for that also that like somebody who's already doing covers and things like that who's got a name in like marvel dc the mainstream is gonna like deal with you know just like a alternative comics publisher at that level like that just really wasn't being done 
you know, that St. Kevin's sketchbook would be like an example, but it was very, very rare. And certainly none of that stuff got this kind of treatment if you weren't Robert Crumb. Yeah, that's another piece. The evolution of those sketchbooks and the presentation has really evolved because some of those 80s sketchbooks, like you get them and they're pretty disappointing in terms of production. This is a huge leap forward, something that uh, Ad House was known for their production. And part of it is books like this. Totally. And by books like this, I mean this book. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, it's not like his other books were quite this advanced. Um, it's smart on James Jean's part, though, too, because he finds a publisher that's a good partner that's going to do the best to like present this work in a flattering way. So you've got DC on one side, you know, winning Eisner Awards with your cover work, your commercial work. And then you've got like a beautiful book like this that at the time could be sold in bookstores. You know, right. like that was a burgeoning time for books like this to find an audience outside of the comic market. I'm sure they sold a ton of them in the comic market. But you look at his career and it's like, I think this was a positive move on James Jean's part too. Absolutely, man. Great stuff. So happy to look at this thing. I remember that when this was ubiquitous, a phantom of the attic, man, you guys didn't buy it at the time. Now, now look at you. Yeah, you pay a little bit more for it now. <laughs> Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July is the last Saturday in July. And we are filling up the free little lending libraries in our neighborhoods uh, full of comics. Take your comic book doubles. Take your comp copies. Take your own comics. And I'll put them in the uh, free little ending libraries. Let's create new comics readership. The Patreon exists for Cartoonist Kayfabe for you to help uh, to help you mitigate the Kayfabe effect. Uh, I see in the comments already now in the live chat uh, that people are mitigating the Kayfabe effect as we speak. Uh, what that means is that uh, you're getting the videos before anybody else gets them. And you are privy to these live chat sessions where we are streaming the uh, record sessions so that everybody uh, in the chat room sees the books that we're talking about before anybody else. The videos are brought to you by the books that we make and uh, this holiday season is uh, not, real Christmas is going to bring about two Eddie P book collections that you need to get your hands on. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is coming to you this holiday season. Uh, 10 year anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree 50th anniversary of hip hop as a culture and we are collecting all four volumes of hip hop family tree plus 140 pages of additional material into the a nice hardcover edition the ultimate statement on hip hop family tree and uh, x-men grand design trilogy trade paperback is coming out um some of those volumes out of print of x-men grand design so we're ganging them all up together in a one trade paperback putting that out to you so that you can get your hands on x-men grand design all over again the comic that i'm putting out right now is Red Room Crypto Killers. Issue 1 and 2 are on the stands as we speak. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. There are two trade paperbacks of Red Room out there right now. I encourage everybody to grab the third issue of Red Room Crypto Killers because I'm starting a daily comic strip and uh, the sort of proto version of those characters are going to show up in a backup feature in uh, Red Room uh, Crypto Killers number three. So make sure you get your hands on that. Jimmy, what books you got going on? My latest self-published book is True Crime Funnies. You can get that on my website or on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg where my patrons read it first and get the download link first. So check that one out. I will also be releasing a Street Angel collection called Princess of Poverty later this year from Image Comics. They are also the publishers of Street Angel Deadly Girl Alive. They just put out a new edition of that one. Between those two volumes, you will have all of my Street Angel comics. So you can pre-order Princess of Poverty now and pick up Deadly Girl Alive now. You can also find Hulk Grand Design, the oversized treasury edition with the fluorescent green cover. Get it while supplies last. One of the best books I've ever made. And The Plain Janes, the first young adult graphic novel, is available uh, while you're watching this. It's not the only way you can support the channel. Jimmy, let the people know. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, fanny packs, hats, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. There you have it, man. Support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Keep the vids rocking on a regular basis. Jimmy, give me those marching orders so that we can be on our way. Make more comics.